Saturday. Here's another story you will hear nowhere else, and it's an important story. It's one you need to know about, kind of a reverse Cuban Missile Crisis, where we, I guess we have to send a gift basket to Panama. They intercepted a ship leaving Cuba, attempting to enter the Panama Canal on its way to North Korea. Of course, who ferreted out the story? Who broke the story? Our friend Bill Gertz, senior editor for the Washington Free Beacon, who joins us now on our call1.com answer line to explain the significance. Hi, Bill. Thanks for your time today. Hi, John. Good to be on the program. So let me get this right. I'll, I'll try to get, get us started so the listeners know. Uh, obsolete SAMs, apparently, hidden on board a ship leaving Cuba. Panama somehow sniffed this out. I guess there was a mutiny or the captain tried to commit suicide, a riot. They were looking for drugs. They found missiles on their way to, on their way to North Korea. Were the Cubans selling the missiles, or were they going there to be refitted? Well, there's a lot of unanswered questions. But now the theory is that this is part of uh, the rogue alliance between communist Cuba and communist North Korea. And in one case, either the Cubans were selling or refurbishing a radar for the North Korean SAMs, or they were just sharing technology. There could have been some arrangement. Another possibility is that this was actually came from Russia, uh, and then the Cubans just trans, uh, shipped it through Cuba as a way to avoid uh, a lot of the monitoring that goes on. You know, the U.S. intelligence community monitors most of the North Korean ships. This ship had not been in the Western Hemisphere uh, before, so it's unusual. And it was uh, fortuitous that the Panamanians were able to uh, track it down. Uh, Panama is part of uh, an initiative launched during the Bush administration called the Proliferation Security Initiative, which means that uh, under that initiative, it's kind of an informal uh, anti-weapons smuggling group. Uh, they can actually keep or detain these weapons and prevent them from, from going on to their final destination. And so, you know, either this, these weapons could be refitted, returned to Cuba, uh, doing us damage, you know, strategically, or they could remain in North Korea doing us damage, uh, uh, you know, strategically, or I guess be sold to Iran or somebody else, correct? Right, right. The big concern here among uh, officials and experts is that uh, this has opened up a new uh, arms selling route from North Korea. You know, the North Koreans have sold every missile, basically, that they've made, and they make everything from short-range scuds to medium-range Nodong missiles, which they've sold to uh, Iran and uh, in Pakistan, uh, up to and including uh, medium and, and long-range missiles. So there is a concern that this could lead to greater uh, sales from North Korea to Cuba of ballistic missiles. Right now it's just a surface-to-air uh, air defense missile. As I was reading your piece on this yesterday, and I found it fascinating, and I touched on it, but I, I have a feeling that we we must have picked up the phone and told uh, Panama, look, we're, we're particularly interested in this uh, ship. When they approached the ship, is that when there was a riot, I read, and the captain tried to commit suicide? Can you elaborate on that? Uh, basically, the story is this. Uh, there was a tip-off that there was illicit drugs on this North Korean ship. That's another one of the uh, uh, North Korea's uh, activities as they deal in, in illicit drugs and narcotics. And so this, that's what triggered the boarding and inspection. And once they got on the ship... Yeah, there was a revolt by the crew. In other words, the crew resisted the boarding, and the captain apparently tried to commit suicide. And that, of course, uh, you know, in, in the FBI they call that a clue, <laughs> and that led to greater inspection, and that's when they found the missiles. They didn't find any drugs. They found missiles and missile components. And uh, they were pretty well hidden on this freighter, correct? Yeah, they were uh, underneath uh, shipments of sugar. So obviously it, it could have been a barter arrangement where the uh, – uh, the Cubans could have paid for this uh, um, uh, maintenance of this radar, uh, but to the North Koreans in sugar. I think more importantly than uh, you know Cuba, the uh, uh, Castro boys in North Korea, we know of that little uh, uh, tin horn dictator. But if Putin is behind this, or the Russians, if this originated uh, in Russia, that is a larger strategic concern for us. Yes. Oh, yeah. There's no question uh, to me that the Russians have taken a major anti-U.S. turn. Uh, it's just that the Obama administration hasn't woken up to it yet. You know, I have a piece this morning about another uh, provocative Russian strategic bomber flight uh, 
uh, in the in the Far East, uh, basically forcing Japanese and South Korean uh, jets to scramble and and chase these uh, bombers. I've been reporting on this for the past year. They've they've been doing that with some regularity, uh, kind of saber rattling against the U.S. So there is a lot of concern that the Russians are definitely turning in an anti-U.S. direction. Uh, because of weakness here? Uh, you know, I think it's uh, more a part of uh, Putin wanting to uh, try to recapture the uh, Soviet model in Russia, uh, albeit without the uh, communist ideology, uh, but it's it's kind of turned into a KGB state. Most of the top officials in Russia are uh, like Putin, former KGB officials. You know, uh, Stone, Edward Stone, who by all accounts is still sitting at the uh, Moscow airport, are you of the mindset that everything that he had to give has already been gleaned by the uh, first the Chinese and now the Russians, that basically he's an empty vessel at this point, or do you think he's still a threat? Uh, still a threat, and uh, he claims that he has not uh, released all of the documents that he has. But uh, according to U.S. officials that I've talked to, they anticipate, they expect that the information he had was compromised, first to the Chinese and now to the Russians. There's no way he could have remained in that transit lounge under Russian control where they could have gained access to his computers, to everything on his person. So they probably copied it. Now, whether he had some encryption that they need to break, you know, that's another issue. But a state like both China and Russia could break that encryption and gain access to those secrets. And both of those regimes have, uh, have plenty of experience in uh, taking information out of uh, your noggin as well. Yes, very well, very, you know, uh, without uh, necessarily pulling out their fingernails. Yeah. Uh, Bill Gertz is joining us on our call1.com answer line. He's the senior editor for the Washington Free Beacon. While we have you here, with all the uh, weapons that are now pouring into Syria and all the disparate groups there, is that going to get uh, horribly out of control before there's any semblance of order? Uh, definitely. Uh, you know, this is the Syria situation is really uh, deteriorating. Uh, and in fact, I'm working on a story today about that. But the uh, the Al Qaeda rebels are in command. Basically, they're they're gaining strength and uh, uh, belated efforts by Western states to back the secular uh, Syrian rebels are not working out. So that situation is not looking good. And the small arms that our president has decided, with limited, uh, you know, limited availability, to give to the the secular rebels, uh, the one ray of sunshine we have there, uh, very ineffective to say the least. Correct? Well, you know, I mean, they're trying to, uh, you know, it's it's just a little bit too little, too late kind of thing uh, in terms of the rebels. And of course, you, you have uh, uh, the Iranians and Hezbollah and Russia backing the Assad regime. So it's. Uh, it's really quite a uh, difficult situation there. And finally, how corrupted now is the Egyptian army? We used to be pretty good friends with the Egyptian military. A lot of the guys were trained here since the, you know, the Soviets uh, left a number of years ago, basically since Sadat. Uh, how corrupted is the Egyptian military, uh, and can we still count on them to sort things out there? Well, Egypt is another place that's basically in chaos now. Um, you have a situation where the military has been very concerned about the Muslim Brotherhood and ousted them, and now the Muslim Brotherhood is trying to return, and uh, I see a, a lot of instability in that key uh, Middle East state. But have they inf infiltrated the military itself? Um, as far as I know, uh, they have not, and now they, they, they were definitely making inroads into do that. In fact, I wrote some stories about how they were trying to replace key positions in both the military and the security forces, but uh, I think the military has has made a, a pretty good effort to remain uh, non-Islamist, although it remains to be seen whether they were able to do that. And finally, your thoughts on the Zimmerman trial. No, I'm just kidding, Bill. Never mind. <laughs> I'm glad you're keeping track of the important stuff. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Bill Gertz on our call1.com answer line, senior editor for the Washington Free Beacon.